these folks in the White House think that they got this thing figured out. Here's uh, Joe Biden. He says, don't worry, quote, from the moment this passes, if it passes, when it's signed into law, we will be talking about nothing from then but about jobs. <laughs> what a joke you are, like the rest of the administration. I know I'm being harsh, but they deserve all the harshness. Oh, now you're going to talk about jobs. Now you're going to talk about jobs. After you just pass a trillion dollars in spending cuts, that's going to hurt jobs. When you, sp when you didn't talk about jobs this whole time, now in the fourth quarter of your first term, you're going to start talking about jobs, and what are you going to do about it? You're going to do nothing about it. If you were going to do something about it, it would have been in this package. Instead, you're going to talk, 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 and not do a damn thing. And by the way, you think it's going to get better? It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. Watch. I have a speech from the president uh, from the White House, uh, uh, clip number 11 here, that's going to show you what's coming up next. The pressure you put on Washington is one of the reasons we finally reached a resolution in the only way we could, through an agreement between both parties. But I've said from the beginning that the ultimate solution must be balanced. Big corporations and the wealthiest Americans shouldn't be exempt from kicking in. That's just fair. I also believe we need to make modest adjustments to health care programs like Medicare so that they're around for future generations. That's why the second part of this agreement is so important. It establishes a bipartisan committee of Congress to report back by November with a proposal to reduce the deficit even further which will be put before the entire Congress for an up or down vote. No tricks, no games, no delays. This chapter is over, but that work and that debate continues. I, I can't understand how he makes that speech, let alone the banner, which we must admit wasn't really in the White House. <laughs> okay, so he says, uh, it must be balanced, it must be fair, the corporations and the rich must pay their share. Well, you got a funny way of showing that since they don't pay a nickel in this deal. Not a single cent. So why are you still talking? Why are you still talking about balance? Why are you still talking about how, oh no, don't worry, the rich are gonna pay their fair share, when we know it's a joke, we already had the legislation. There isn't a single dime in there that the rich or the corporations are gonna pay. I, I, you'd think he'd be embarrassed to give that speech, but he's gonna tell us what a historic accomplishment it was. Uh, and he says, <laughs> the worst part is, he says, there'll be modest adjustments for Medicare coming up later. And he has said over and over again about how there must be more entitlement reform coming up later. That means the super Congress that is in this legislation that's going to make another one and a half trillion dollars in cuts, they're going to come for your Medicare and for your Social Security. So if you thought you got screwed the first time around, wait till you get a load of the second screwing they got in store for you. And he thinks, and Biden thinks, don't worry. No. And when we get into that super Congress, then the Democrats will win. I will bet you any amount of money. I will do anything you like on air if that turns out to be the case. So specifically, what do I mean? If they get rid of the Bush tax cuts in this deal, you name your price. They're not going to get rid of the Bush tax cuts. So the most that they can do and probably will do because this is the grand bargain they've always been wanting to do is... They might take away some, if they're lucky, might take away some tax loopholes, deductions, and subsidies. But in return, they will cut taxes. They will cut taxes for the top income bracket, meaning that they take away a lot of the middle class uh, tax benefits. In other words, your taxes go up, but the rich taxes go down, and corporations' taxes will also go down. If they touch taxes at all, that'll be the deal. You mark the date that I said this. It's a guarantee, because it's what, what uh, President Obama's always wanted to do, and it's what the Republicans want to do. So <laughs> the American people and the middle class getting screwed over, it's just beginning. And this guy talks about how, oh, don't worry, with the Super Congress, there'll be no tricks or no games. The whole Super Congress is a trick in a game. Because then you get rid of the advantage that the Democrats theoretically have by controlling the White House and controlling the Senate. You give away that advantage, you make the sides even, six on both sides, for the Super Congress of 12, and you know for a fact that there will be a conservative Democrat that will switch over and vote with the Republicans, and they only need a simple majority. S write it down in stone. There's no way that changes. Okay, I will do only the smallest caveat to that. The only way it changes is if you all finally wake up and get so mad that you go, no, I don't give a damn if it's a Democratic president, a Republican president, a Martian president. I don't care. I'm going to fight against this tooth and nail. Why should I let this guy cut my Social Security when even Bush couldn't do that? 
You know the easiest way to support the show? Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Totally free. Press the button, boom. Yeah, you subscribe and every time we upload a video, you get notified about it, so you're always in the loop. You can see the, all of our videos whenever you want to. Fun and for everybody. It's not only fun, it's the only way that we're able to be independent media. And then you can say about our show, by jumping in. People who watch our show are very informed. I don't know what else to say about it. Oh. There it is.